it so we can go through the arc of your because i think uh, one of the reasons i wanted to have you on here is because i think yeah. you have a really interesting <laughs> professional arc <laughs> what I'm gonna call it <laughs> I just had to do my CV for the next arc and that's one way of putting it yeah yeah it, it all weaves together and I I see it and I think a lot of people who I think follow follow Alpenglow are really interested in you know interesting career paths so when when we met hi everybody what, what were you doing god what was i doing so we were in grad school yeah, it was we were... like an interdisciplinary grad program yeah. so everyone was coming from different places so it's supposed to be a full-time program but what actually happened was that i worked next door at the art gallery of ontario as an it professional where i was running their sharepoint installation and I got permission to do the master's degree under our union provision that I could do education if it was related to my job. And the words digital futures appeared in the degree, so they let me. So I would just turn on a VPN and do my job from wherever I was. And when they got upset, I would start hanging different articles of clothing on the back of my chair. And I was really lucky. The, the other IT guys really liked me. And they just, I think they might have lied about where I was for two and a half years straight. And that was great. But I was also running site three. And I think I had another job at the time, but I can't remember what it was. I think yeah. you were doing, well, I don't know if this was a job, but you were doing like cyborg, this bizarre art project. Oh, right. Um, okay. So I was just my... looking at your website. This is I'm all <laughs> up to date on your past. <laughs> well, yeah. I haven't looked at my website in three and a half years. Um, so I was working on this project called Zborg, which was for Hannah Epstein, who is an artist in LA now. We met through something called the Difference Engine, which I did right before graduate school, which was an indie game thing that was supposed to let us get better at making games and, and being, it was that code access time. So Hannah needed a programmer. And I can, pro well, I can lie effectively. I said I knew well, how to- you're a programmer, to... Alex. You... Yeah, you're but I learned JavaScript for that project. And what I decided to do with that project was to build a multi-monitor streaming service that would preload video in chunks to websites on out-of-date devices so that you could use whatever computer to stream internet across three or four platforms in eventually the back of an unmarked white van because <laughs> which is not like which is not like a joke or a euphemism or something this was an Real art project yeah. that was projectors and screens that drove around mm -hmm. in this van i didn't I, it was funny because i didn't get it at the time because i didn't know anything about critical theory and i was just like what are these bananas people's doing like what is going on and now i can appreciate the project but definitely at the time i was like okay alex <laughs> well, i wrote a lot of critical theory about javascript and ellen zizu the famous famous critical theorist during that Actually, time maybe we should tell i don't know if these people are if people watching are going to know what critical theory is how would you describe critical theory right because I don't even know how I would describe critical theory despite so, doing a PhD in it. So critical theory and cultural studies is a thing that happened in the 1970s when they realized nobody was looking at anybody's lives that weren't like rich white people in Britain. Specifically, it actually stems from Manchester University, I think, maybe? Oh. Yeah. Um, so what's called a red brick university, uh, a dude named Stuart Hall, who died in 2013, wrote a lot of things about how important it was to study people's lives where they lived. And that was totally revolutionary. And then a guy named Dick Hebdige wrote his master's degree on what punk subcultures are and why they matter and how they work and whether they're actually scary or not. They're not. They love their moms uh, and yeah. got along great with the Jamaican kids who lived next door. And that was the start of critical theory cultural studies. Before and that, I guess it's a way of thinking about, a way of looking at the status quo and analyzing why it is and why it yeah. has come up and how people, because Bob is asking in the chat. Um, it's different than sociology or 
sorry, psych, because it studies people in context with their own lives. Mm -hmm. And so the French were doing this for a long time because they were having kind of a conversation for about 200 years about what it meant to be French, not to be French. And I live then, in Quebec. That conversation is still happening. <laughs> it stops. It's, it seems culturally important, significant. It but it was interesting when it got to Britain because it became about the British class system. And that ended up being the degree I did, but also with JavaScript. Yeah, a lot of stuff that cool. me and Alex were working on were, was like what it means to have technology in society and maybe some people might call this digital humanities i guess but like what it means for computers to be in and around things <laughs> yeah what does it mean for everything to be legible to a computer what does it mean for people to be able to write their own software so there's open source but that's all inside of comp sci so what I'm really interested in is what it means for people to be trained to be able to write a bit of JavaScript, have it be bad, go back, have it be good, have it be bad again, <laughs> and the tension that comes when you work with things and learn through working with them, which is what I'm doing with this storm cloud. I have, oh, this is, this is, it's botched. <laughs> <laughs> I have forgotten like how to solder.